Oh, come on, Izzy. Give it up for Izzy. This is another, this is another talented, anointed woman of God. And um, God bless you. I'll give this one to you. Good evening, everyone. I'll try to make it brief. Um, but I had a wonderful, miraculous provision uh, about, uh, I think it was a month ago now. Um, well, I'm going to make it as, as short as I possibly can, but there's important, interesting things that happen, so I'll try to make sure I put those in. Um, my washing machine finally died on me. I came home to a big pool of water after having spent a whole morning worshiping God. So I was like, oh, why do I have water on my floor? Anyway, I uh, quickly rang, I don't know if you guys know Marlon Crow, but I love Marlon. Marlon is an awesome young man. He has his own business. You know Marlon? Yeah. I rang Marlon, I said, Marlon, I have water on my floor. Anyway, he said to me, oh, as it so happens, I'm just driving past your place. And I was wondering how you are because I haven't heard from you in ages. He's my appliance guy. And he said, I'll be there in about 20 minutes. So he came, he looked at it quickly. He said, oh, I'm sorry to tell you. You're going to have to buy a new one. Because if I fix this, I'll be back in six months and blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, all right, well, this is not a good month, but I'm going to trust God. It was at a time when I was in my slowest period of, for those of you who know I'm a musician, I have... Eight months of craziness, two months of just not so bad, and then at least two months that I'm doing absolutely no work whatsoever. Wow. So it was in my two months of nothingness that this happened. Anyway, I said, okay, I know that God is my provider. I'm not going to worry about this. Whatever it is, it's fine. He rings A.L. Thompson and says, he needs a washing machine. There's only two left. They have a sale. It's 20% off. <sighs> okay, I'm already giving God thanks, but I'm like, oh, how am I going to afford that? Anyway, I went there. I paid what I had to do. He came and installed it. A month later, for some reason, my neighbor downstairs had not been in her apartment, and I'm sure you can all guess what happened with the pool of water, right? Oh my God. So she rings me and she said, did you have a leak? I'm like, yes, I did have a leak. Wow. And of course, I know that, you know, it's my problem, right? The fact that I had the, that there was this leak, and she said, well, I've got quite a lot of ceiling damage and blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh. So it's one of my crazy busy days. I said, look, I can't look at it now but can I come and look at it on Monday? This was the Saturday. She said, sure. She sent me pictures, etc. Anyway, um, she needs it done urgently now because her tenant is moving in on the Friday. I couldn't get anyone to come and look at it quick enough, and so, um, and she didn't give me access, which wasn't helpful, but hey, we're gonna leave that out of the story. And then, um, uh, I she gets a quote. The strata gets a quote. The strata gives me this amazing quote, which is not amazing, $2,000 to, to fix two, two small patches. Like, it, okay, it's the size of that, the one little ceiling tile, right? And $2,000 apparently to replace that and to repaint it. But she's also saying that there was some other spots that were like further away from the one big spot. So now I'm really like, this I can't afford. This is, this is definitely not even optional. I'm like, how am I going to just suddenly get $2,000 from absolute nothing? But I'm like, you know what? And this was an interesting period in my life because I had been praying away the spirit of poverty over my life because I realized that I have been suffering with that because my father is a gambler. He wouldn't like me to say it, but it's the truth. And so he has... He has brought that into our lives, if you know what I'm saying. So I'm breaking generational curses at this point in my life. Anyway, I'm like, it's okay. God is my provider. Somehow something is going to happen. I don't know how I'm going to get $2,000, but I am. Um, then she rang me and said, I think my quote should be a little bit um, lower than that. She got one for 1200 and that was the entire ceiling repaint. So I ring my ex-husband, who is my business partner, and I was complaining to him about this thing, and he said to me, how much did you say? I said, 2000 He goes, what are they buying? Gold tiles or something? I said, no, apparently it's $2,000. He said to me, no way. He says the ceiling tile, like just the, the stuff alone, the sheetrock or whatever, is $50, and the paint is like 200 so how is that possible? So like, bear in mind, I know nothing about construction, I know nothing about vehicles, all that kind of stuff, so I was just trusting that a $2,000 quote or a $1,200 is a fair quote. Um, anyway, I, uh, I, um, I ring her back and I explain to her exactly what he said to me. And she said, yeah, you're right, it does sound a little bit ridiculous. And um, then I said to her, well, he's willing to do it for me and, and do the the stuff, I just need access to the place. Well, she said, I'm not having anybody do it. I want a certified whatever. whatever. 
Anyway, what I didn't know at that point is that legally, I could have just told her, well, you're gonna to have to deal with a handyman because legally she can't say anything. I was willing to pay for the damages. It doesn't have to be someone certified. So she would have had to pay the excess, but I didn't know that at the time. So anyway, I was now gearing up for $1,200 or whatever the case may be. Couldn't get a, another person to come in and look at it quick enough, um, although a few friends recommended some people, but they just couldn't get in at the time frame she wanted it. And so um, I rang her guy and I said, look, I know you probably think I'm crazy, but I am desperate. Whatever deduction you can possibly give me, I'm just going to ask you because if I don't ask you, well, I'm not going to get anything. So I'm just going to tell you the story and, you know, and I told him and he said to me, I feel so sorry for you. Because honestly, it is a job that could be done much cheaper, but I am a certified contractor and this is my price because... I have other people that are at other jobs. She wanted this done urgently. I had to pull them off. So from a business point of view, I genuinely, I can't offer you less than this. And he says, but if we manage to match the color on the ceiling, I can reduce it by at least half, which would be about $600 or 800, he said. I said, okay, well, I'm just gonna have to stick with this. I'm gonna pray about it. I went that night, I prayed. I said, Lord, you are my provider. I don't see any jobs on the horizon, but I'm going to trust that you know exactly what I need and you know that I can't afford this, so I'm just going to leave it in your hands. Um, the next morning um, was the day that he was going to do the work and obviously needed the money. And so I rang him in the morning and I said, um, can I give you half of it now and then you can tell me what the remainder is? He goes, well, I'm kind of really busy right now. And I said, well, I'm rushing off to go to um, my women's prayer meeting, which is uh, well, the one that I was with at Avril, Avril's house, but um, it was at someone else's house that day. And I said, so can I contact you after and you can tell me what the price is? And he said, yeah, sure, I'll do that, no problem. So um, I go to my women's prayer meeting and on my way, I just started praising God for everything. I started praising him for the fact that I had godly women that I could meet with, that I had church that I could go to, that he loved me, that my band was so successful. I was just giving God praises the whole way there, thanking him for my family, thanking him for health, thanking him for just the amazing kids I get to sing for. And I was just bubbling over with praise is all I can say. I was just worshiping him the whole way there. So I got there. We all shared our stories, our week, our problems. And um, and at this point, I'll be honest with you, I didn't really feel like blessing my, my neighbor because I thought she was being very unreasonable under the circumstances, especially when I explained to her that I couldn't afford it. And she had her deadline, which I completely understand. So um, I told my ladies the story, and we started praying over the situation. And thank God, one of the ladies stepped in, and she started just blessing my neighbor, just blessing her and blessing her and blessing her. And um, when we finished, I, I rang the guy to say that I was going to meet him. And before I left, I said, hey, ladies. I said, well, I guess i got to go pay my bill now. I said, let me go and deal with it. I said, but you know what? I just have confidence that that bill is not going to be 800. He's going to tell me 500. And so we all agree. Anyway, I ring the guy, I meet him, and I, 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 I said to him, so how much do I owe you? He said $500. I said, did you say $500? He said, yes, I did. I said, I just prayed for that. Why do you think I want? No, I'm only kidding. But I mean, I was very grateful. And it has taught me not to limit even what I thought that job was worth because I am confident that if I had asked for 300, God would have given me the 300. So I want to encourage anybody who's in an awful situation that God is watching and that he will provide. Mm. He always Good job. Good job.